Thank you. Uh, it is a delight to be uh, with you here in Riverton, which is a community that has dedicated it, uh, itself to shielding uh, our democratic values through multiple foreign wars, and it's great to be in the presence of people who have been uh, on the front lines in that regard. And it is an honor to be able to join you. Uh, I do not have the honor of saying I've served in the United States military. But I do have the honor of saying I am the governor of the state that is uh, more dedicated to take care of our veterans and their families perhaps than any other state in the United States. And I'd like to share with you why I'm motivated to make sure that our state does fulfill uh, that commitment. It comes from a couple motivations. One is uh, the experience I've had with people who have served as you have had. I always, when I think of veterans, I think of a moment uh, during the Iraq War when I was at Landstuhl Hospital in Germany. It was early in the conflict. And I went, and just by happenstance, I walked into a ward, and there were two uh, Army folks, uh, young men, uh, one of whom I think was from Port Orchard, who had just been evacuated from the field of, of battle, and they were laying there, and then, you know their limbs were up, and they had tubes in them, and, and these people were had some pretty severe injuries. And I asked them, you know, what their plans were, and each one of them said, "Sir, my plan is to get back to my unit by next Monday." And that was the attitude that I saw. And if everybody could see that, they would want to help this organization achieve whatever goals it has. That's one of my motivations. The other is to is to not just pay my respect for your contributions while you were in uniform, but your contributions to our state thereafter. Because I've seen what veterans do when they come home and continue their public service in teaching kids in, in athletic programs, and YMCAs, and boys and girls clubs, and churches. That, that service to me is almost as important as the service you provided. And I saw that with my dad. He was a World War II vet, served in the military and the Navy in World War II, came back, was a teacher and coach. And now I get to meet all these people he mentored as a young, as a young teacher. I think each of you have, have done that as well, and I want to thank you for that service. So I'd like to, if I can, just tell you some of the things we're doing to honor this commitment to veterans. And like I say, it is a very, very high priority uh, for us. I'm proud to say that the very first thing I did as governor was to sign an executive order to make sure that we can uh, get people back to where they are as veterans. And I'm very happy about that. And uh, we have the best leader in America on this, which is uh, Alfie on this as well. And I gotta tell you, I'm so pleased about her leadership. <laughs> so the very, very first executive order I signed in May 2013 was about veterans transition support. I wanted to increase the number of veterans in state service because we know what great people uh, veterans are and we wanna get them in state service. And I wanna tell you that has been successful. We've hired more than 350 veterans already in state service. They make up now 8.5% of our state employees, and they're some of our best and brightest. And if you have any sons or daughters or grandchildren or nephews or nieces, send them to us. We want them in state service because we know they're great folks and we hope that'll happen. But it's not just in state employment. We want to make sure that when people leave their uniform service, they have a good transition plan for their future. So uh, with Alfie's leadership, we now have started a transition program so that as people are transitioning out of the military, they have a preparation for their next job and their ultimate uh, vocational goals. And I'm proud to tell you this. Now, you may think this is crowing because sometimes politicians crow a little bit. It's kind of the nature of the business. But this is a, this is a fact. We today have the gold standard to help people as they leave JVLM, as they leave Bangor, as they go into civilian life, we have the absolute best transition program to make sure that those veterans know what they're gonna do and have a good job when they leave the service and have a good career. And I'm proud to say we're the best in the United States. And I'm proud to say, I'm proud to say, I'm proud to say that, uh, that the, the Pentagon now is, is taking our program and they're using it as a national model so other states can embrace the kind of progress we've had. Uh, because we know we want to keep these people in Washington State. We have a thing called uh, uh, our, you know, our, our, our Camo to Commerce program. 
So we're helping young men and women as they leave the service find out a way to sp start a small business. A lot of these folks have aspirations to be business people. So we're helping them get started in their business as they go out and leave the military service. And those are you know, the, next, uh, the next Microsofts, I think, are somewhere at JBLM right now, and I'm excited to help them form uh, their, their businesses. We have another program that we've, we've started now this year, uh, which creates a shared leave pool and allows veterans to use shared leave to attend medical appointments. It's just a way for state employees to help, uh, to help each other in this regard. That's a small thing, but small things add up when you're a veteran, particularly if you have some health challenges. So I'm proud of some of the work we've done. I want to thank you for helping us understand the needs of veterans so that we can make sure we help people. And you, this organization is very, very successful in doing that. But we know we're not done. We know we have some remaining challenges, one of which is homelessness amongst our veterans. And we know how painful that is to know that we have veterans in our homelessness program. <coughs> Now we've increased our state funding to try to address this. We increased our capital budget by 15% last year. We're continuing to try to increase our services, but we have got to increase our outreach to find these veterans so we can get them the mental health care they need, some of them, to help them deal with some of their substance abuse challenges and help them get through that so they can get back on their feet. So our job is not done when it comes to veterans homelessness. And this is one of the things I hope that we are gonna be attentive to. I'm glad the Supreme Court made a decision this morning that will give us a few more dollars of sales tax revenue. And wouldn't it be a good idea to put that to homeless veterans relief? I think that would be a good purpose for those additional uh, dollars. We've got more work to do on, on childcare. You know, the childcare costs that when veterans are coming out and just starting a new career, uh, we got to be attentive to that. Now, we've increased our early childhood education. I'm proud of our educational achievement. We've solved the McCleary decision for K-12 finally. We've increased early childhood education, but we've got to be attentive to the needs of these young families as they're coming out of, of, uh, of military service. So uh, I just want to uh, say thank you, uh, not just for your service in uniform. I want to say thank you to this organization to helping us focus on one of our highest priorities. I wanna say thank you to those who are going to help us with these remaining challenges because there's more work to be done for veterans of the state of Washington. So I'll look forward to the next signing ceremony to help veterans. Thank you very much for what you've done for our state and our nation. Take care.